Hi, today we are going to do a botanical group design. So this is something, we've got our vases set up here at the back with some candles too. So there's 10 vases. So this is a design that creating with color and grouping, you can make a big impact with actually very, very few flowers. Uh, and I'm going to do this in kind of a lime, white, and maybe chocolate uh, color scheme, which I think will really pop. And also too, in the summertime, I don't know about you, but do you really ever put anything on your mantle? I mean, in the winter months, I think we dress up our mantles a lot, but in the summer months, often we just kind of forget about them. So this is a nice way to make a big impact with just a few flowers. So we are going to use this really beautiful amaranthus, lime green amaranthus, which is pretty. And I'm going to put some out on each end. So like I said, the idea with this design is that you can make something really spectacular and show-stopping with not a whole pile of flowers. And of course, when we filled up these vases with water, we put flower preservative in them to help the water stay fresh and keep the flowers hydrated. And we're not going to use any greenery in this design. We're just going to do flowers. So it's kind of a no fuss type of a design. I'm going to try a rose here too. So these roses are a little bit blown open, but that's okay for what we're going to do. And we're going to reflex them. And what that means is when this rose is loose like this, I can bend these petals back. Just put your thumb in there and you can just reflex the petals back and all of a sudden it's going to make that rose look like a great big garden rose. So you can see how it really changes the look. Like some people don't like it because they think, oh, it looks like it's old. But if you're wanting it just for impact, look at the difference between that and then this one. And basically it's the same rose, but you're getting, you know, kind of a big show with that. So we'll cut these again. We always use a nice sharp knife or a good pair of snips. I'm just going to tuck that in there. And you don't have to reflex them all. You can just do a few if you want to. Are any of the flowers that you're using local flowers? Yeah, actually we have a lot of stuff that we've been growing ourselves, like this amaranthus, the green amaranthus. We've got some really pretty sedum there. We've got some corn cockle. Scabiosa and actually this chocolate lace flower is new to us this year and it's it just is a really really beautiful color. So again I'm just refluxing this, refluxing this. So I'm just pushing my thumb into the petal. Sometimes you're going to break a few petals and that's you know what that's just the way it goes. But you can see how all of a sudden that's looking really big and gorgeous. So this is a perfect design too, that if you only want to buy 10 flowers, you will have lots to play with on this and make it into something really, really gorgeous. And you can see it's not taking me a whole lot of time. It's just pretty easy peasy. This sedum is really pretty too, and it stands up really nicely. That's quite a pretty one. Aside from a mantle, are there any other locations that you'd recommend having a design like this? That's a good question, Kate. Yeah, I think this would be really gorgeous if you had, oh, just a pretty dining room table that you wanted to dress up and just put it all the way down the table, or if you had maybe an event like a wedding or any type of, um, you know, an entranceway to somewhere, like if you were doing um, a signing table for a wedding or just any other big event. And again, with very few flowers, you can make it look like it's a pretty zowie design. Take some of this really pretty corn cockle. See, it's almost got like little freckles inside, which is very pretty. This is, I think, in the same family as corn flower. And you can kind of tell because the greenery is, is very similar, but it's very light and airy. You can see how it's got some movement, really pretty. And it's nice to have some different sizes and shapes of flowers. I think it, it just overall gives uh, the look of what you're doing more interest instead of always, you know, all the same type of flower. I think it just gives a lot more interest to uh, what you're making. And 
and I'm always cleaning the uh, stems so we don't want any um, any of the greenery below the water line because then it's going to make the greenery or sorry the um, water get a little bit dirty and flowers don't really like dirty water they do a lot better when we have fresh water now I noticed you're not using any additional greens could you do something like this with just greens that would be absolutely fabulous because that way too if you did just greenery in here I mean it would last for ages and um, if you wanted to add to it or change to it you could easily do that which is nice too and even when you do something like this and it's grouped like this I think it's the idea of the group that gives the impact for everything You can see that these little vintage bottles, um, these aren't old, old ones, but there's lots of vintage bottles around. And often people collect them or they just have them sitting in their kitchen maybe or whatever. My husband has lots of these and we tend to use them lots of times for dinner parties and things like that. Um, but these are actually brand new, but you, you can find these in all kinds of different places like a yard sale or well, that type of thing. How do you choose what levels to place the flowers on to show the best impact? Well, I think as long as we have some in and out and some play, I think that's probably the best. If everything was on the same level, I think it would be a bit boring. But if we've got some up, some down, some hanging over with the, like the amaranthus, I think that visually gives just, a, it's just more interesting. So you can see it's starting to come together. We'll do a few little more tweaks in here. Just add a few other things. And this is really pretty white Lysianthus. Oops. I think that's Ontario grown too, but a really pretty flower lasts really nicely. And you can see it's kind of higgledy piggledy, so I'm not really thinking too much about what I'm doing. I'm just placing the flowers where I just I where I just feel like it's fun to look at and it looks nice. And we also have this really beautiful black knight scabiosa, which is I think the color is just stunning. We just all of us here just love it. Again, this is um, this is from our own cutting gardens, which we're having a lot of fun with right now. So where am I put these guys? I think maybe just with the amaranthus. And again, this is one of those dancey flowers. It's got a lot of movement to it, and it just it just looks very wild and loose and natural. Do you have any suggestions for what other color palettes might look nice in this type of arrangement? Well, I guess it depends what kind of impact you want to make. So this I think is fairly soft, subtle, you know, it's pretty much just within a tonal thing of the whites and the lines and I think the chocolate just pops it a bit. Um, but I think any color range would look good just depending on where you're putting it. Um, you know, whether it's on the dining room table or if it's on the mantle, you may want to do a little bit of matching you know, to whatever your decor is. So you could do a hot color palette, like all the brights, like the oranges and purples and lime greens and hot pink, which would be pretty outstanding. Or like I said, keep it subtle like this. And often all one, one color tone. You know, we've got the glass that ties it through, but we also have the color that ties it through. And I think that's what makes this particular kind of grouped botanical look good. I'll just add a few more over to this side. And you can see just adding that tiny bit of dark um, scabiosa in here, that it's just giving it a little bit more depth. And I think depending on what your backdrop would be, you know, at the back of your mantle or on whatever table linens you're using, uh, will dictate somewhat what your flower choices are too. Do I have any holes in there? It might need a little bit more of the um, scabiosa right with that one because I think the roses look a little bit stiff there, so I want to just make them look a little bit more playful. And 
again, sharp knife or a good pair of snips. You always want that. And flower food is very helpful. So, and you can play around with these a little bit. Like that one, I think, might be better with the rose in the front. And I think I'm pretty much done. So that'll give you an idea in just a few minutes once you have your vases set up and we'll light these candles and then Rachel will come back and show you a picture in a moment once I light the candles. And that's our group botanical themed uh, display for today.